Hello and welcome to Microsoft Word tutorial. In this tutorial we will be learning about the environment that Microsoft Office 2010 provides us. This environment changed back in 2007 when Microsoft launched Microsoft Word 2007, Excel 2007, PowerPoint 2007, in short when it launched Office 2007. And since then all versions of Microsoft either they be on Windows platform or they be on the Mac platform have been using this environment. The old environment had menus up top but in this new environment we have something called a ribbon. So we're going to now explore this new environment. Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, these are the three main tools that we'll be discussing in the successive tutorials. However, for now, in order to locate them, you simply click the Start button, then you go to All Programs, and then you go to Microsoft Office 2010, and then you select the respective software. Once you have used them, you probably could also find them located right within this region. If you don't find them over here in this region, or if you haven't pinned it up top, you can always go under All Programs, and then you can locate Microsoft Office 2010, or in, in my case, it is only Microsoft Office, and then you can simply click on whichever version or whichever software you would like to open. Currently, I'm using Microsoft Word 2010. Now let's closely look at the environment of Microsoft Word 2010. Now this white region that you see over here where I'm moving my mouse, this is the page. And what you see on the side over here, this white bar, this gray region, this gray bar region, this white bar with markings on it, this is called ruler. There are two ways you can turn on or off a ruler. Either you simply click the view and then you ch check or uncheck the ruler and you can bring the ruler or take it away. The more easier way is on this region, this over here where I'm moving my mouse right now, this is called your scroll bar. It's called scroll bar. This is your ruler. Right above the scroll bar you're gonna see a view ruler button. If you click on it, you can turn off. If it is turned off, you click on it, it turn on the ruler. So you could be turning it on, you could be turning it off. Okay, so that's your ruler environment. This is your page. This is a ruler. This is horizontal ruler. This is vertical ruler. And this is your scroll bar. Now towards the top, this region where I'm currently moving my mouse, where it says document one, this is currently the default name of this document. If you haven't saved the Word document, it gives the default name of document one. That doesn't necessarily mean it is saved. You always need to save your file if you would like to permanently store the information. It is always a good practice to save your file before you start going and um, also save it periodically just in case if anything goes wrong you're not going to lose any of the stuff. To the right of that you see the name of the tool that I'm using. It is Microsoft Word. On the right hand side you will going to see that we have a close button and it also gives you a little window when you leave your mouse for a little while there. This is called screen tip. You're going to see it everywhere in this environment. The next one, if I bring my mouse over and let it go, it says restore down so that it allows you to move it to different sizes. And then you have the minimize that so allows you to minimize the window and also bring it back like this. And then if I go on the right hand side here I have quick access toolbar the reason this is called quick access toolbar because most of the options that are here are usually more than one clicks away so since you are putting this one click that's why it's called quick access if you want to add more items to this quick access toolbar or if you like to remove more items here's an arrow to the right you click on it and then notice the items that are checked those are the items that are currently available to you. If I check this item, like if simply clicking on new, now you're going to see there appears one more item in the list. Okay, so if I go down in the list and uncheck new, now new disappears from the list. So that's your quick access toolbar. Then you see file, home, insert, page layout, references, mailings, review, view, 
Acrobat. Now, Acrobat is an add-on which could only be added if you have Acrobat installed. Not Acrobat Reader, but Acrobat Writer installed. So, you may have more or less the same number of tabs that I have. However, these are called tabs. Okay, Insert, page layout, references, mailings, all these are tabs. So, I took you to the View tab earlier today. So, if you click the View here, okay, here you go. You notice that all these options now change. If I click the Home tab, all of these options change again. Okay, This huge box that you see, this rectangular region over here, in which you see that as I change my tab, I ch see the options changing. This entire box is called Ribbon. It's called Ribbon, R-I-B-B-O-N. And inside the Ribbon, what we do is we divide the Ribbon into tabs and each tab is divided into groups so we have a in the home tab we have a clipboard group we have a font group we have a paragraph group we have a styles group and we have an editing group and if you notice there is a line that separates one group from the other and each group has a bunch of options or commands in it and this allows one group to be separated out from the other group so far, we have looked at, we have a quick access toolbar up top. We have a title bar in which you see the name of the file, the software, okay. If you come down here, you have this ribbon environment. In the ribbon environment, you have tabs. The tabs are divided into groups, and the groups are further divided into options or commands. Now, some of the buttons are clickable to turn them on or turn them off. For, for example, if I'm typing here a text name, and if I select the text and click B, if I click on B, which is basically for bold, and as, as you can see in a screen tip, it tells me, I could also use a keyboard shortcut of Control and B together. So if I click on it, now notice it turns into a golden yellow background. This means the option is currently on. If I click on it again, it turns it off. These kind of buttons are called toggle button. T-O-G-G-L-E, toggle buttons. So here, it allows you to work with uh, the ribbon options. Now, some groups within our ribbon have more to offer than what is listed out here. So for example in the font group you see a launch button which is in the line of the font. If I click on it it opens up a dialog box. The reason this is called a dialog box because I cannot resume my work until I close it. So this is why it's called a dialog box. That's the difference between a dialog and a window. Window you can switch back and forth from one window to the other. But a dialog you must close it before you move on to the next option. Second of all, some launch buttons are programmed a little differently like the one in front of clipboard. If I click on it, rather than opening up a dialog box, it opens up a window on the side. This window on the side that gets attached to the current window, it's called pane, P-A-N-E. And the name of the panes are always written right up top. So the name of this pane is clipboard pane. I can always close this by clicking on this little X here, and this will be closed. Now if we come down here to the status bar, which is this area towards the bottom, okay, if I start from the left, here it tells me how many pages I have. Currently I have only one page, so it tells me you're on page number one out of page number one. Then it tells me my word count. If I click on this option, it gives me the details about my document. Pages, words, characters, with and without spaces, paragraphs, lines. And then the one right next to it, you see a book-like symbol with a little checkbox, check mark on it. This means I didn't find any spelling errors or any grammatical error. Everything is good. If you see a red X over here, that means something is wrong. You should spell check. You should run some kind of grammatical check as well. Now on the right hand side on the status bar there are one, two, three, four, five buttons. These are the five different views of a Microsoft Word document. Currently we are looking at our document in the print layout view. We have another view called the full screen reading view. Then we have a web 
layout view, we have an outline view, and finally the draft view. To the right of that, you see the 100%, which is currently the viewable area or the size of this particular document. You can always zoom in or by clicking the plus sign, or you can simply use the slider to zoom in or zoom out, and you could set it to the center. Or you can simply click on the 100% and you could easily either use one of these three options or you can set your own percent by using now this is called spin box spin box is a box in which you could type something as well as what you can do is you can click the up arrow to go upwards and down arrow to come downwards so it's called a spin box so click OK here and here I have set it to 90 percent if I ever want to go back to 100 percent I can just simply adjust it back to 100%. And then in the top right corner, we have this question mark. The question mark represents the help. Microsoft and all the Office help is a separate application. So if I click on this question mark or on the keyboard, if you press the F1, then it launches the help screen. In the help screen, if, you, if I'm looking to type something, for example, if I would like to type the word new and press enter or click this um, search button, either way it goes through the entire help and say, okay, what are you looking for? Are you looking for what's new here? Create a new collection, word for new users. All of these are different articles to look at and read and to um, utilize the help features of Microsoft Word. On top of that, to the right of the help, you see this arrow pointing upwards. What it basically means, if I click on it, it will going to minimize my ribbon. If I need more area and ribbon is taking up the space, I can always hide it. And clicking on it will going to bring it back again. Similarly, if you right click anywhere on the ribbon, you can also choose the option to minimize the ribbon, which does the exact same thing. And clicking on this button, or right, um, we're going to bring bring the screen back to you. So that's basically. Or you could use the shortcut of Control F1 to minimize the ribbon. So all of these little things are being discussed here um, in this introduction tutorial, where just so that you can learn a little bit about the environment of Office Office applications. It doesn't matter if you're using Word. PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, Access, or the list goes on and on and on. The idea is the same. You're going to have a title bar. You're going to have a quick access toolbar. You're going to have a ribbon. You're going to have tabs. You're going to have groups. You're going to have options. Once again, as a recap, we have quick access toolbar in the top left, top left corner. On the top right corner, we have this close buttons underneath help, minimize ribbon, then we have this entire region called ribbon that goes from one end to the other. Then the ribbon is divided into tabs. Tabs are divided into groups like clipboard, font, paragraph, styles, editing. Each group is separated by a vertical line. Each group has commands or options. A group may have more commands or options than what's shown on the ribbon. So either it'll going to open up in the form of a dialog box or it will going to open up on the, in the form of a pane. Sometimes a pane open to the left like clipboard pane opens to the left but sometimes pane also open on the right hand side. So clicking on it we're going to bring it and clicking on it may also close it. So it's also like a toggle button in that in that sense. Then towards the bottom we have a status bar. On the left hand side we have some information. On the right hand side we have some viewing options. You could zoom in, zoom out, and all those little things. And then on the right hand side we have a scroll bar to scroll up and down. The size of the slider will going to shrink as you add more and more pages to the document. Over here in the top left corner in the page we have where I'm currently moving my mouse. This is called the tap stop button that we're going to be exploring later on in these tutorials. And then we have the ruler which runs across at the top and on the side. You can always show and hide the ruler by clicking the view tab and unchecking or checking the ruler option. Or you can be clicking on the button right above the scroll bars. Hope you had fun watching this tutorial. Catch you soon in another tutorial. Thank you very much.